Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about a new release here in the UK called Kirby's Rainbow Paintbrush. This has actually been available in the US for a couple of months now, uh, but just released uh, here on the, I think it was the 7th or 8th of this month. Um, in America it's actually called Kirby's Rainbow Curse. Now I'd like to start saying this is actually my first Kirby game I've ever actually played. So. In this review, I can't really compare it to any others, so I'm sorry about that. But anyway, Kirby and Rainbow Paintbrush was released in the UK on the 8th of this month in 2015, which I paid uh, £27 for off Amazon, so it was a dear game. Uh, the story is about a mysterious portal opening in the sky which drains all the colour from Dreamland. Elaine the paintbrush revives Kirby and Waddle D, <laughs> the best name ever by the way. They learn from Elaine that they must stop the evil Klesia in order to return colour to Dreamland. So that's basically the basis of the story of this game. It's nothing in too depth, but at least it gives it a bit of backstory. Yeah? Rainbow Paintbrush is a sequel to the 2005 game on the DS called Kirby's Canvas Curse. Now, I personally haven't played this game, so I really can't comment on it, but apparently this is the sequel to that, or a follow-on to that at least. The idea of the game is to direct Kirby by drawing on the touchpad. When drawing on the touchpad, a rainbow rope will appear, which directs Kirby around the levels. The idea is to get Kirby from start to finish while collecting stars, chests, and fruit, food, whatever along the way. So let's talk about the controls. As I said previously, you direct Kirby by drawing on the Wii U gamepad with the stylus. This will create a rainbow rope that Kirby can roll along, but that's not all. You have to draw the rope in certain ways to make Kirby change direction. There are also a few other moves Kirby uses. One of these is to tap Kirby, which will give him a little boost. You also do this to defeat enemies. However, not all enemies can be defeated by this attack. Some require a more powerful attack, which is where the second move comes in, or the special move, whatever you like to call it. Once you have collected 100 stars, Kirby will gain a super power-up move, which can activate by holding the stylus on Kirby, and he will power up to then turn into a torpedo-like attack, depending on its form. Taking This will take out anything in its path, and you can also direct these by using the rainbow rope again by drawing the stylus. The controls in the game may be simple but they feel very fluent. Like what I mean by this is like it doesn't take much to draw stuff on the Wii U gamepad. It feels really nice. When you have played an hour or so of the game you can effortlessly just direct Kirby from start to the finish of the level with ease. The art style in this game I'm <laughs> really in love with. I just love the simple, bright, vibrant colours of the game that just makes it an absolute joy to play. You know, just typical Nintendo. However, this does bring us onto a slight problem I personally have with the game. The game is looks beautiful on an HD TV. The colours just pop and you can really see the clay art style that they tried to create in this game. However, you end up spending about 99% of the time looking at the Wii U gamepad. Now, this is nothing major, but I think it's just a bit of a shame that a game that looks so beautiful on an HD TV, but you're subjected to viewing it on the Wii U gamepad because you have to draw on it. it I mean, it's, it's just me having a niggle, but personally I think this is a bit of a letdown. I mean, because Fair enough, if the screen on the Wii U gamepad was a bit better, it might look a bit better, but still, it just doesn't look as good as it does on the TV. And this is probably only one, of, this is my major complaint about the game, which to be honest, isn't major, but it's the only one I've had so far. Now, moving on to the music in this game. It is great. I mean, I thought Mario Kart 8 soundtrack was top notch, however, Kirby doesn't exactly come up short on this. I mean, the way I end up playing the game is sat on my desk with the gamepad sitting on the desk and I plug my headset in. I get so immersed in the game that when I was playing this just the other day, my girlfriend came and was speaking to me and I didn't even realise she'd entered the room. 
I mean, the music just goes really well with the levels and the boss battles. It's just, it's a joy to listen to. There are only 20 levels in this game. However, personally, I have not finished them all yet. So, what I can comment on is the boss battles are really fun. But it's pretty much the same tactics with each boss I've encountered so far. This consists of you pretty much creating, drawing on the gamepad to create a role, dodge the enemies and then tapping the shit out of Kirby to attack the boss. And repeat, that's pretty much it. This is not to say this is a bad thing, because each boss presents a new challenge and difficulty. For example, the first boss is very easy, you have to dodge a few things and just attack. However, they've recreated this boss on a further level that it's the same kind of fight, but in order to actually attack the boss this time, you have to use a super power up move which requires collecting the stars, so you're having to dodge a lot more things first. By far my favourite level in this game is the ones where you get to use the Kirby tank. I personally feel that Kirby's alternative forms are the best part of this game. If it's not shooting people with the Kirby tank, it's directing your way underwater with the submarine. Once levels are completed, you unlock challenge modes. These do various things. I've only tried one so far, which was to direct my way around the room, dodging enemies, and collect the chest to end it. This also adds a little bit more content to the game. Um, you know, so once you've completed it, you can try out the challenges, you know, collect all the figurines, so at least there's still stuff to do, and that's never a bad thing. So, to round it all up, is Kirby a good game? Well, other than the Wii U gamepad issue that I personally had, I have not experienced any other problems with this game. It's kind of the game that you'd like to pick up, play for half an hour, then go out and do what you need to do. Although the game is not that difficult, it does provide some planning on the player's part. You have to remember, even though you're drawing on the Wii U gamepad, you can't just draw infinite ropes. You do have a bar that runs out, so you have to collect, well, uh, I'm guessing it's a jar of paint to refill this, or just let the bar refill slowly. But, the problem with this is, is if you're standing still and you don't have any paint to get away or direct Kirby, this leaves you vulnerable, so you know, you do have to think. So, should you buy it? Uh, really, this is all dependent on yourself. If you want a game that is not too difficult and you don't want to spend a tremendous amount of hours, then yeah, sure, I'd say pick it up. I think you'd really enjoy it. However, if you want a game with complex puzzles, in-depth story, I'd say probably give this one a miss. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this qu quick review. Um, if you like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.